Welcome back to the iNav playlist. JC here, and today I will be talking about what flight controllers I recommend for iNav. In the last video, I showed you what GPS modules I recommend. I'll be leaving a link to my iNav playlist in the top right of your screen and description below so you can check out that video, as well as the upcoming videos. Uh, next, I will be showing you how to wire these into your flight controller, and the video after that will be setting it up in iNav. So I will go ahead and say that these three flight controllers are my top three picks, but they are of flight controllers that I have personally used. Now, I haven't used all the flight controllers out there in the world, so I couldn't uh, tell you which one is the best. I am just... This video is really just... Uh, giving you helpful tips and tricks to finding a great flight controller for a GPS build. Uh, that's more of what it is. I'm not telling you to pick one of these three. I'm just showing you what to look for. So if you've seen my uh, flight controller comparison videos, you would know that the Omnibus F3 and F4 is my favorite. And I know you're tired of hearing me talk about it, but I really think the Omnibus not only is the best for a acrobatic or uh, racing build, but also a GPS build. I also have the SP Racing Mini as my second choice, and Seriously Dodo as my third choice. Like I said, this is only the flight controllers that I own and have personally used. Uh, I'm sure there's even better ones than these. So, what to look for in a flight controller? Uh, now, I know a lot of people think that for a GPS build, you need a barometer and magnetometer in a flight controller. Is that true? I want to say for a barometer, yes, you do want a flight controller with a built-in barometer. The magnetometer, no. As a matter of fact, it could possibly hurt you, and I will show you firsthand exactly why. Uh, but first thing, you don't need the magnetometer in a flight controller either way because it's built into these GPS modules. Uh, if you don't know, a magnetometer is the same thing as a compass. It's, it's just a fancy word for compass. So we got GPS and compass built into this. Uh, now we'd still need the barometer, but uh, the other thing you need to know is if the fucking chore you choose does have a built-in magnetometer, then you need to make sure it is not the same as the magnetometer in your GPS module. The reason for this is because it won't work. So for example, all three of these have barometers, but the only one that does have a built-in magnetometer is the SP Racing Mini. Uh, as well as this SP Racing Evo. So if I plug it in, and this is how you can find out if they match or not. Uh, I'm going to plug it in, go into iNav. If you have not yet flashed firmware, I'm sorry to butt in real quick, I'm editing the video. The very first thing you want to look for in a flying chore is go to iNav and the firmware flash er, tab and look in the drop down box and see if iNav supports the firmware for that fly controller. When iNav first came around, there were only like three or four different fly controllers it supported. They have added in a lot more since then, but uh, make sure the firmware is there because if it does not support the firmware for that fly controller, then you can't use it. iNav firmware, then do that because if you have clean flight or beta flight firmware on your fly controller, iNav is not going to work. You have to have iNav firmware. So I've already flashed my firmware, then go to the CLI and type set mag, then enter, and look at your mag hardware. It's showing that the mag on the SP Racing Mini uh, and Evo both is the AK8963, where I know for a fact that in these Hollyboro GPS modules they use the HMC5883. So they don't match, that means we will not have a problem. You will just have to manually go into your CLI and change your uh, magnetometer in iNav. And uh, in the setup video, I'll show you how to do that. Uh, but like I said, if they do match, then what you will have to do, and I consider myself a pretty knowledgeable guy, but I have no idea how you would do this without screwing something up, but you have to cut the trace of your magnetometer going to the processor. And I don't know how you will do that because if you look, just look at your processor on your fly controller and look how close these pins are. Chances are if you cut one trace, you're going to cut the trace right next to that one as well. So I, I wouldn't even recommend doing it because chances are your fly controller is going to be trash after you cut a trace you're not supposed to and then something stops working. So back to the beginning. Do you need a barometer? Yes. Do you need a magnetometer? No. 
And if you do have a magnetometer, make sure they do not match. So what else you need to look at? Uh, I would say the amount of devices you can connect because on GPS builds, you typically have a lot of devices. Uh, you got your receivers, telemetry, on-screen display, the GPS module, and anything else you want to add in. So for example, uh, the Omnibus has three, well, because all three of these are F3 processors, same thing for F4 processors, they all have three UARTs. Uh, but this has three UARTs and no soft serials, meaning you can connect three devices. But the Omnibus is special because it has the built-in on-screen display and it doesn't require a UART. So if you were going to add in an on-screen display either way, then technically you have that plus three, so four devices. The SP Racing Mini has three UARTs and one soft serial, meaning you can theoretically connect four devices. So we got four devices, four devices. Now the Dodo has three UARTs and two soft serials for theoretically five devices. One thing I will add is with your flight controller, you need to determine if it has the CP2102 chip and driver or if it uses a virtual COM port. For example, both of these use virtual COM ports, meaning none of the UARTs are shared with the USB. For these flight controllers with the CP2102 driver, UART number one is shared with the USB. So if you were to connect your uh, computer to your flight controller and you have a device on UART one, the device and your computer will be trying to talk to this at the same time and your flight controller will get confused and that's when problems start occurring. So it's not that big of a deal. Just remember on these boards you will have to disconnect the device from UART1 before you go into uh, INAV or something like that. And hopefully uh, you don't put your GPS module on UART1 because you kind of have to have that connected when you go into INAV to set everything up and test it, make sure everything's working. So I would recommend placing your receiver or something like that on UART number one. Another thing you need to look for is uh, accessibility to the SEL and SDA pins or pads or whatever it may be because SEL and SDA is what we will be uh, using to connect the built-in compass or magnetometer of the GPS module to the flight controller. Uh, and for this reason, I'm, I have to go ahead and say that with the Omnibus, the F3 and the F4, these are perfect for that, but the Pro versions are not. So let me explain. Uh, if we look at the, let's just look at the F3 Omnibus. You will see here the uh, UART number one where it says TX1 and RX1. UART number two is right next to that. UART number three is technically the uh, you are number well, you are number three is here with the uh, S bus and PPM pins. It's a receive, and then we have the SEL and SDA pins over here. Now, if we look at the wiring diagram for the uh, F4 Pro, and this goes for the F3 Pro as well, either one of the Pro versions. If you don't know the Pro versions, the only difference is they have a built-in uh, current sensor. Here is UART number three, but those same pins are shared with the SEL and SDA. This means that because we will be using SEL and SDA, you lose UART number three. So you lose one device right there. And like I said earlier, you need a lot of devices. So that's why I don't recommend the Pro boards. Uh, now the F3 and F4 both, you get separate SEL and SDA pins, which I have right here on the blue and white wire. Uh, so it's, it's, and it's not shared with the UART, so it's no big deal at all. Another thing I want to touch on is uh, with a GPS build, a, a lot of people like having current sensors, so you can see your current. Another reason why I do not recommend the F3 or F4 Pro Omnibus, because like I said, it has a built-in current sensor, which I have right here. You have to run your main battery leads coming like, you know, right from your battery to the flight controller first, so you will have a really fat power wire and a really fat ground wire, and then you run it from this then to your PDB, so that you actually have two fat power wires and two fat ground wires. That's a pain to wire. Not only that, but as some of you may know, sometimes whenever you crash, your battery ejects and it pulls on those power wires. If I had to choose to lose my pads whenever it rips the pads off, if I had to choose between a $40 flight controller and a $5 PDB, I'm going to choose a PDB because I can easily replace that for five bucks. Now the thing is, you can actually buy P 
PDBs with current sensors built in. And these are great because you just run your battery leads right to these like you normally would on any other build. And then they have a signal pin or signal wire that you just run from this. And all flight controllers have a current pin. And you run that signal wire to the signal. Well, you run the signal wire to the current pin on the flight controller. And that way you get your current reading. So there's absolutely no point in having a fly controller where it's the current sensor is built into the fly controller itself. You might as well just use a PDB with it built in. Much, much simpler. And like I said, these are a lot cheaper. Next thing I want to talk about is uh, of course, you know, speed, you know, processor speed and all that is somewhat important. It's not as important for a GPS build, but the Omnibus uses uh, SPI instead of I squared C. SPI is much faster than I squared C, meaning you can run those faster gyro and PID loop times, where the Mini and the Dodo both uses I squared C, so they're a bit slower. But like I said, for a GPS build, it's really not that important. And the last thing I want to cover is, of course, price, because we all care about price. Uh, so the Omnibus F3 is selling for $23, and the Omnibus F4 is selling for $37. The SP Racing Mini is still selling for $50, and the Omnibus, or the, my bad, the Dodo, is selling for $40. And now, if you have either one of these, that's fine. I, I'm not saying go out and buy an Omnibus. I'm just saying, if you are in the market for a new fly controller, uh, and it, it doesn't have to be either one of these, but if the price is more than $23 for a F3 or $37 for the F4, then you might as well just go with the cheaper... Uh, board which is would be the omnibus and that's pretty much going to do it guys so uh, like I said check out that playlist to see the last video and the upcoming videos and I will see you there